Sonic the Hedgehog was an overwhelming successful hit, so a highly anticipated sequel was inevitable. Sonic's second major game released nearly a year and a half later on 21st of November 1992 in Japan and on the 24th of November for North America and Europe and developed once again by Sonic Team, but not in Japan however. Development took place in America with the Sega Technical Institute, otherwise known as Do quick to the slow! <laughs> the first game lead programmer Yuji Naka and other fellow Japanese workers were brought in to work alongside the American developers. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was built upon the first game without straying very far from its excellent formula that was established previously. For most people growing up in the 90s, Sonic 2 was their first experience on the Mega Drive. But lucky for those who grew up with Sonic much later down the road, it was pretty much easy to get your hands on it. Just like Sonic 1, Sonic 2 has been released numerous times on different platforms and consoles on compilation pieces and it still continues to be re-released. Pretty much sums up how Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 can never ever be separated. Sonic 2 has a story that isn't told in the game, much the same with Sonic 1. The plot can be summarised as this. Dr. Robotnik is once again planning world domination through the power of the Chaos Emeralds and his army of badniks to help power his armoured space station, the Death Egg. We are not alone this time, as we have a new sidekick in the form of Miles Prower, or simply Tails, a twin-tailed fox who accompanies Sonic throughout the levels. Sonic 2 plays pretty much the same as its predecessor, built upon the set of the original with complete zones whilst collecting rings, defeating badniks, star posts serving as checkpoints, and item box scattered. But there is a new addition. We are introduced to a trademark maneuver known as the Spin Dash, a special move that Sonic is able to perform by spinning in place as if revving up an engine before taking off at high speeds from a stationary start, allowing much faster gameplay than Sonic 1. Instead of 3 acts per zone, each zone has 2 acts, with a boss fight at the end of Act 2. Having 2 acts per zone may make the sequel seem shorter in comparison to Sonic 1, but this is leveled out with having more zones, adding level variety, and the zones are longer, fleshed out, and in greater detail graphically. Each boss battle has Robotnik appearing in the customised Eggmobile, much like in Sonic 1, where you have to avoid his onslaught attacks and defeat him in order to progress onto the next zone. Just like Sonic 1, I replayed the 2011 release of Sonic 2 on mobile devices for the 60fps, widescreen support, and remastered soundtrack. Out of the classic era games, I found Sonic 2 to be more fun to replay it as I found it to be better designed to showcase Sonic's speed and became more of a platform running game instead of more of a platform jumping game that Sonic 1 was. We start off with Emerald Hill Zone, or as IGN think it's called, the Green Hill Zone from oh. Sonic 2. Although similar to Green Hill Zone, this zone has plenty of easy obstacles and secret pathways. This is another standard tropical introduction stage, surrounded by fields and hills, lots of loop-de-loops, sloping hills and twisting pathways, narrow tunnels and plenty of badniks around. Emerald Hill is simplistic, with a very straightforward basic structure and the open layout, which encourages a nice, flowing and speedy, but brief playing experience. Easily one of the simplest Sonic levels in existence, thanks to how easy it is to gain speed quickly. The first boss in the game is Drill Robotnik, where he docks his Eggmobile into a drill car and drives across each side to hit you with his drill. This is not a very challenging boss, as it's very easy to dodge your attacks and jump on him. After the seventh hit, Robotnik will fire his drill like a missile, but again, very easy to jump over and deliver the final hit. In Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic and or Tails can enter a special stage by hitting a star post with 50 rings or more, which will trigger a halo of red stars to briefly float above, allowing to be able to jump up and warp to the special stage. There are 7 stages in total in which you have to collect 7 Chaos Emeralds instead of 6 in the previous game. Special stages track Sonic and or Tails from behind while they run through a semi 3D half pipe course filled with rings and bombs. A set amount of rings must be cleared to pass through 3 checkpoints and eventually obtain the emerald itself. The order stages are fixed in rising difficulty, meaning that you cannot enter this next special stage without passing the previous one, unlike in Sonic the Hedgehog. Whether you are able to obtain the emerald or not, you are then transported back to the last star post you hit in the zone with zero rings. Collecting all 7 Chaos Emeralds will enable you to unlock and use a super form. I'm gonna go ahead and state an unpopular opinion. I prefer Sonic 2 special stages over Sonic 1's. I'm sorry, I just find Sonic 2 special stages to be fleshed out and better than the maze hell that was Sonic 1. Here, it's much easier to control and it relies on skill to collecting a certain amount of rings and getting the emerald, rather than relying on luck to get a chance to grab the emerald before hitting the goal signs. But I will say this. 
Special stages can still suck my dick. Chemical Plant Zone, a grimy factory that produces toxic chemicals and a fan favorite stage of the community, including mine. Blue toxic gloop, mechanical bandits, and twisting chemical pipes are located throughout the zone. It's a high speed zone with long twisting paths and loops, allowing fast gameplay to happen with ease and quite possible to outrun the screen. There are high speed warp shoots that suck the play in and deposit them at the other side of the tunnel as a use of transportation. This zone marks the first appearance of the dash panel, which helps Sonic gain even more tremendous speed when making contact with them. Act 2 features a long pool of pink chemicals in the lower section, which behaves the same as water, so it's best to avoid it as much as possible. Chemical Plant is a fun, speedy, straightforward level. Seeing the pink water below me is just making me a little bit nervous. Okay, no, no need to panic, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, time to panic, not okay, not okay! The zone's boss features Water Robotnik, whom is piloting a floating vehicle that creates sludge bombs. He hovers over the pink water, filling up his overhead canister, and drops the bombs onto the player. This isn't the only hazardous thing, as the battle is fought on a solid platform surrounded by less solid edge segments, which if you fall down, you lose a life via bottomless pits. This increases the difficulty of the boss by a bit, merely due to the fact that you'll most likely fall below rather than getting hit with no rings, and also the possibility of falling down even after defeating the boss. But it's not like that's gonna happen. You gotta be fucked. Aquatic Ruin Zone. A cheerful little water level set around crumbling ruins in a small lake that's hidden within a thick forest. This zone has two main areas, which are divided by a lake of water right along the middle. One route lies above it that's filled with interwinding roads, and the other route is submerged below. The top route is made of multiple paths that interwine with each other, going behind or through each other. If you happen to fall into the underwater section, you'll end up in a somewhat parallel route and forced to resume the act from there. Bubbles aren't scarce here, however they can be missed easily sometimes, so it's best to be observant if you happen to be underwater. Around the water surface, bushes are located and can obstruct your view, making them the perfect place for enemies to make sneak attacks. Unless you're super careful, expect to lose runes quite often. Upon the boss, we are met with totem poles that rise up on each side, followed by Robotnik floating in with a hammer. Robotnik will float around the totem poles and hit them in an alternating pattern, which causes them to fire an arrow at the random height. The arrow will fly into the opposite side, in which you have to jump onto the arrow and then jump onto Robotnik to deal damage. It's quite possible to jump and land on the very top of the totem pole and just jump on Robotnik, dealing damage in a much quicker and easier fashion. This exploit makes it one of the easiest and quickest boss fights. At least easier and quicker than Chemical Plants boss. Casino Night Zone The first casino theme level in the series, filled with bumpers, flippers and blocks that are arranged high above the buzzing cityscape at night, with colourful neon lights everywhere. Featuring various casino themed gimmicks and slot machines, this makes it one of the most unique zones in the game. Sections in this zone's level design are heavily based on pinball tables, with huge amount of pools to utilize the player as a living pinball, and sometimes having to curl into a ball and enter pinball's tables in order to progress through. Casino Night has many alternative routes, with the lower routes being more narrow and the upper routes being more linear. Regardless, there are often gaps between sections with many gimmicks to be used to either climb up or fall down. One of the most prominent features of Casino Night Zone are slot machines that are placed roughly in the pinball table sections. By getting into the hatch, you can roll the slot machine and enter different combinations to receive a certain reward, which can vary from a certain amount of rings to either gaining nothing or losing rings. This is where you discover if you had a gambling problem at such a young age. Feel exposed? You should be. Stop it. Get some help. In this boss fight, Dr. Robotnik attacks with a claw wielding machines in the pinball table arena. He drops red bonds from a hatch underneath him. His claw emits an electrical field when not in use, so you are limited to how to approach for an attack. There are pinball flimpers that you can use to spring yourself up and hit Robotnik. However, you are more likely to get hit if you're not careful and not time your attack well. So your other option is to spin dash your way up the walls and hit Robotnik by jumping off the walls. It is tricky but this method is less dangerous than attempting a flipper based attack. It's one of the most difficult boss fights in the game. Excuse me while I go and collect all the Chaos Emeralds, okay? Okay. A few moments later. Six and a half hours later. Ooh, time to test this super form out. Okay, we have 50 rings and oh my god, it's Super Saiyan Sonic! What? Oh. 
I can explain. As you can see, Sonic is now golden yellow and practically invincible, and definitely not copying off a gimmick from a popular Japanese pop culture franchise that is well known for having spiky yellow hair as a transformation. His speed, acceleration, and jump height are all increased. Even though his attributes have increased in this form, this makes it difficult to control Sonic, specifically when doing precise jumping and platforming. Super Sonic consumes one ring per second, and once you have no rings left, you revert back to your normal state. A good way to balance him in the game without being too overpowered and broken. Heel Top Zone Set high above the clouds where only the peaks of the rocky mountain tops and canyons are visible. It's a straightforward but hilly level with high walls to climb, lava pits to avoid, and internal caves to explore which are similar features to Marble Zone from the previous game. Basically, hills are located at the top. <laughs> Get it? Because it, cause it's called Hilltop, and they have hills at the top of the stage. <clears throat> Appearance-wise, it shares similarities with Emerald Hill in terms of the pattern on the ground and the grass, but with a turquoise scheme instead of orange. This zone has seesaws that are used to spring up, functioning the same as to the ones in Starlight from Sonic 1, vine lifts that you ride down, and continuous earthquakes that create havoc in the volcanic caves, causing the ground and lava to rise and fall. At the end of Act 2, you'll enter an arena with two small, uneven ledges sitting between two pits of lava, again, reminiscent of Marble Zone. Dr. Robotnik rises up from the lava pit and attempts to scorch our heroes with a flame jet, which he submerges beneath the lava and resurfaces on the other side and repeats the cycle. This boss can be defeated easily by continuously bouncing on the submarine as soon as it surfaces from the lava, making it for a quick boss fight. Just like the others thus far, an easy boss fight. Mystic Cave Zone An enclosed corridor base stage set inside a dark, spooky cave tamed by minecart rails and tunnels, with deadly spike traps and crushes awaiting for your demise. The size of the level isn't big, mostly crammed along a thin, horizontal space. There is not much of speed to be made here, so the idea is more about careful trap evasion and platforming hopping. This is well accommodated by the enclosed and cave-like level design with a claustrophobic ceiling along the whole top of the stage and chunks of unconnected ground floating around fairly close to each other. You may think that because you don't really go fast here, it wouldn't be a good or fun stage. But honestly, it's one of my favourites. This level is full of traps ready to attack you without you expecting said traps to appear, so you're going to be cautious in unfamiliar territory, and I love that. A feature in this zone are hanging vine switches, which are used to open up bridges and gates to help avoid falling into pits and help you progress to the goal plate. Fans know that Act 2 is notorious for a specific pit that is inescapable with spikes, where if you fall down... It's more annoying if you fall down as Super Sonic because since you're invincible, you literally have to wait until your ring counter hits zero and then you get killed. Call me crazy, but I could have sworn there's a little secret down the infamous pit. What are you just falling into? I don't know. A hidden palace? Drill Robotnik returns with not one, but double barrel drills in their zone. This mech burrows through the roof of the cavern, dislodging rocks that rain upon Sonic and Tails, which you'll need to dodge to avoid getting hit. After bombarding the heroes with debris, Robotnik's mecha descends and comes at them with its drilling arms, and then the cycle repeats. This boss requires more time of dodging and avoiding just to get a hit in or two, as the likelihood of getting hit is basically double compared to other bosses. Despite that, it's a nice difficulty jump, and I appreciate that. Oil Ocean Zone It's literally in the name. An ocean of oil. It's sunset in this grimy refinery, decorated with suspended paths and surroundings. It's quite a cool looking and pretty zone for an oil station of course. Oil Ocean has a suspended structure to it, as opposed to the ground based one. So all platforms comprise of thin rows and platforms floating in the air in a very complex network. It is also a very large zone, occupying a lot of space. There are green furnace flames that shoot you upwards onto small platforms and sometimes in a series of spheres which transport you across to other areas. The oil occupies the whole bottom of the stage and its fixed properties act as quicksand, so you quickly sink and drown if you don't jump your way out. Robotnik's submarine returns from hilltop and attacks while being under oil. He attacks by deploying a variety of weapons, including a spy harpoon, which you must crouch to avoid getting hit, and a laser cannon, which you can either jump or crouch to prevent getting hit. After he's attacked, he slowly resurfaces, which gives you the opportunity to attack the cockpit. Then the cycle repeats. The boss battle feels somewhat similar to what was in Heeltop, just with different weapons to avoid and longer, since you're basically waiting for Robotnik to resurface. Metropolis Zone Oh boy, this is where things get hard real quick. 
Metropolis is a giant Eggman industrial factory. Instead of two acts like the other zones, Metropolis has three huge acts, all having a massive array of trigger features and traps to negotiate through. The difficulty of Metropolis relies on the excessive amounts of harmful objects and enemies, particularly these three bandits, Asterons, Shell Crackers, and Slicers. And screw them! Asterons are self-destructing starfish drones that are placed with infuriating precision, such in places where they can and will knock you off certain platforms and lifts. Then you got shell crackers, which are crab-like robots that stop you in your place by punching you with their giant claw at a fast rate. And then the slicers, a madness-like batnik that hurl their razor-sharp scythe arms with boomeranging action, which proves surprisingly difficult to dodge. Their placement are cheap, especially where as soon as you see them on the screen, they have already attacked and you cannot react or dodge in time, making sure that your ring count stays very low. It's frustrating and unfair. At the end of Metropolis Zone's huge third act, Robotnik breaks down his Eggmobile for battle. Although this boss lacks any direct offensive weaponry, it remains nonetheless quite difficult in comparison to earlier fights due to its heavy defensive countermeasures. Dr. Robotnik surrounds his pod with a ring of seven orbiting drones, which prevents Sonic and Tails from easily landing a hit. If and when an opening does present itself and is striped, one of the pods will deploy, releasing a duplicate of Robotnik. These copies bounce lazily around the floor and can be destroyed quite easily, if not annoying too. You'll most likely be losing lives and replaying Metropolis and the boss, thanks to the harsh nature zone. Fun times, yes. Sky Chase Zone, a very different level that takes place in the air and only one act long, with no boss and checkpoints, only rings and badniks. Sonic and Tails give chase on their biplane, the Tornado. You move around freely within the gradually scrolling environments in which rings and badniks come towards you from the right, where you can either move around or jump onto them to defeat the badniks. No matter where you go, the tornado will always follow your position and you'll always land back on the wings of the tornado, should you decide to attack. It's a simple, fun level that acts more like a mini game and lasts for around 2 minutes. Wing Fortress Zone Also known as Sky Chase Zone Act 2, this single act is based on Robotnik's first flying battleship. If you're playing as Sonic and Tails, this is where you venture off alone as you become blasted off the tornado upon approach of the battleship. Throughout the whole level, there's a constant threat of falling into the bombless pit and losing life since the aircraft contains so many opportunities to fall down, be it by swinging hand over hand on the bars right next to flaming booster engines, or jumping along retractable platforms set in the side of the ship, or being thrown over wide, open spaces by the launcher chairs which lie amidst the steel ringing. I repeat, you'll be in a constant fear because of this. The paths take you all the way around the mighty ship that are filled with propellers and speed launchers. Despite being a very brief stage with a simple appearance, this is one of the toughest stages that demands the highest degree of skills to complete. In this boss fight on the airship, Robotnik is seen behind a force field, which you are now trapped between a pair of them. Robotnik deploys spike platforms and a laser beam to cut Sonic down. This is quite the difficult boss fight as you have to jump on top of the flattening platforms when the laser opens its shield casing and while a web before it fires. Sounds easy, but the platforms are moving around so you won't get hit in easily. Plus, you won't be able to get hit while the laser is firing at you, on top of dodging the spike platforms. There's a lot to look out for and pay attention if you want to survive. After enough hits, the machine overloads blowing up the force fields and sending Robotnik running. We chase Robotnik onto an exterior gantry as the evil scientist makes his escape through a one-man spaceship. Tails reappears on the upgraded tornado and we follow pursuit through the skies, leaping onto the spacecraft before entering in space. And so it comes to this. Death Egg Zone. Two boss battles and no rings at all. If you thought the final boss from Sonic Ones was challenging, think again. Upon entering the battle station, you are greeted with Mecha Sonic, a robotic clone of Sonic in a silver coloured scheme, whilst Robotnik watches you from the background. Mecha Sonic has different attacks that are similar to Sonic's, such as the spin dash and his spin jump. He also has a jump and spike launch attack that is very difficult to dodge. The best bet is to defeat him before he gets the chance to perform that attack. You have to make sure to get as many hits in one go on Mecha Sonic's head, and that is the only area to deal damage without getting hurt. Once Mecha Sonic is vanquished, we enter a quick chase with Robotnik. <laughs> Why are you running? Why are you running? Before he jumps onto his final boss, the Death Egg Robot. You better pray you're stuck the lot some lives and continue, because you'll be using them pretty quickly in this round of trial and error, where you gotta read what the attack pattern is, when to attack, and what to avoid. Because again, no rings. At all. The Death Egg Robot begins to walk towards the player while moving his spike hands back and forth. Now your natural instincts will kick in and make you find a gap to land a hit, which is fair, but don't do that because that will lead you straight to death. 
and you have to do the whole fight with Mecha Sonic again. Afterwards, it flies off screen onto the air in an attempt to stomp on the player, and then launches attacks like rockets after landing. And the cycle repeats. If you manage to get behind the death egg robot, a pair of grenades will launch, which will basically result in death. So don't do that. What you want to do is land a hit after Robotnik lands from his jump and immediately run straight to the left side to the outside of the spike hand's reach and repeat process. It may be slow and monotonous, but you cannot afford to rush through the boss battle with the very high possible risk of death. So take your time, and slowly, but surely. We are greeted with a series of small black and white images showcasing Tails and the Flickies looking up the sky followed by Tails boarding the tornado, taking flight to come and rescue Sonic, who is seen falling as he enters the atmosphere. As the musical climax comes in, so does Tails as Sonic lands on the wings of the tornado with the flickies flying behind. The tornado turns and leaves for a moment before coming back for a final victory pose. The day has been saved. A nice little ending to a great game. Super Sonic also has its own ending if you complete the game with all 7 Chaos Emeralds collected from the special stages. Instead of falling down, Super Sonic is shown flying through the skies with Tails joining in and Super Sonic flying next and flies around before doing the victory pose. What a game indeed. Although its most difficult sections such as the final boss and Metropolis Zone are much greater than what Sonic 1 offered, Sonic 2 isn't that much of a tough game in general. It did provide some, you know, unique challenges, but it did also introduce some iconic stages and enjoyable moments that still stick with me since the first time I played with Sonic 2 all those years ago. Though Sonic 2 doesn't advance the level design of the series in particularly huge leaps and bounds, the zones contain a similar degree of well-developed variety and vibrancy to the Sonic 1 level counterparts. There is a two-player versus mode that you can access, before you have a, you know, an extra controller, or a younger sibling, or even a... a... friend. Hello darkness, my old friend. In this competition mode, opposing players can pick Sonic and Tails and race through the level in a horizontal split screen environment. You can select to race on three zones, with said zones being Emerald Hill, Casino Night and Mystic Cave, or you can compete in the special stage to collect the most rings. Having a multiplayer split screen was revolutionary for its time in the 90s, but over the years, having horizontal split screen hasn't aged that well since everything is squish, just to fit everything on screen. But you gotta give Sonic Team credit for doing something new and different with the technology that was available. You really didn't play 2 player versus mode if you didn't pick Sonic over Tails all the time. Admit this, we all did this and it felt so good to win unfairly against your inexperienced younger sibling or friend. The soundtrack is top notch quality and easily one of the best soundtracks of the franchise. The track score has a huge variety of different genres and styles, ranging from lively, cheerful and energetic for Emerald Hill, Chemical Plant and Aquatic Rune, jazzy band style for Casino Night, memorable melodies for Mystic Cave, Egyptian style tune for Oil Ocean, very light and slow paced dreamy tunes for Sky Chase that's perfectly suited to the nature environment of the level, and Wing Fortress being very dramatic with trumpets and big drums with a hint of precarious danger. Metropolis Zone may be a painful zone to progress through, but it has such a bang of a track, thanks to its upbeat and catchy track with electric guitar bass style beats, with its memorable disc scratching sound effects and mechanical rhythm that best suits the theme of the zone. These are the tracks that I always enjoy listening to on repeat. Sonic Team took the formula that they created with Sonic 1 and improved upon it, making Sonic 2 one of, if not, the best sequels of the franchise, thanks to the level design that allowed more consistent high speed, creating some of the fastest experience of the Blue Hedgehog, and with almost twice as many zones with improved graphical detail. Also thanks to the zones having multiple routes, hitting shortcuts and secret areas, as well as more diverse traps and enemies. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was one of the best selling games in the entire 16-bit era and in the franchise in general, hitting right at the peak of Sonic's popularity. It is cited as one of the greatest video games of all time, receiving critical acclaim for its level design, visuals and music, and I honestly cannot disagree with that statement. To me, Sonic 2 is a great entry point to get into the series, at least for the classic era game, mainly because of the introduction of the Spin Dash, which helped the gameplay feel more fun, fresh, and it really focused on you going much faster than what Sonic 1 introduced. And just like what I recommend in Sonic 1, you should play the Christian Whitehead version that is available on mobile devices. Out of the two games, I would pick Sonic 2 over Sonic 1 any day. And should Sonic 2 be your first entry point, you're going to create great memories with it, I guarantee it. 
Green Hill Zone from Sonic 2.